morning. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And we have one more person who will be joining us soon, which will be Stephanie Johnson. And um, I want to thank you all for being here. First of all, I want to thank the panelists. Um, the reason you were even chosen was because, <laughs> because of your longevity in real estate, which also shows your flexibility as well as your uh, enduring sense of humor. So I think that that in and of itself would lead to a great panel. We hear a lot today about what's going on and what's changing in the industry. We also know what's going on and changing in our own private level of economics as well, because if we're in real estate, it's because we're in it for the people. So we're dealing with not only life situations of our clients, but our own personal life situations. Um, the good news is we haven't been able to be replaced by robots yet. And um, with that comes the full existence of being a human being. So it's been my experience that one of the things that lead to the highest level of longevity in this success is the navigating around drama rather than into the middle of it all and how best to do that, but with generosity and gratitude. Now, this isn't meant to be a psycho-spiritual uh, analysis of what it is that keeps our interior lives in motion, though if we get there, we'll get there. But what this is, is how does it play out in your everyday business? How does a philosophy of generosity and gratitude play out in your everyday business? And you've been so kind to um, say yes to being a part of this effort to uh, Stephanie's in, but not on camera. Okay, to be a part of this conversation. So I want to start with you, Joski, because you and I, I think we all go back a long way to tell you the truth. I, you know, that's the good news about growing older. Sometimes yesterday feels like forever ago, but forever ago feels like yesterday. So, so, so we get to say that relationships matter. So Joski, tell us a little bit about your tenure and where you are today with your real estate career. Oh my gosh. Um, well, I have been uh, a licensed real estate broker for over 40 years now. Um, and it was, uh, it was a, a younger agent who said to me, um, who said to me, uh, you know, asked for my business card as I was, you know, touring the property. And when I came back, he said, oh my God, how long have you been in the business? And I said, well, what made you ask that? He said, your DRE number is so old. <laughs> and that was how I learned about that, you know, that they, they do come there. So, you know, anyway, um, uh, you know, I, my career started out in, um, uh, I worked for an Australian merchant bank and I co-founded their real estate operations here in the U.S. And my territory was Europe and the U.S., I had a counterpart uh, in, in Australia, uh, and then, and that was in from 82 to 90, then I joined, um, Andy Serkin had a small little company at one time, and I was, I joined there, and then from there, I went to McGuire uh, for about five years, and then when, then I've been at Pacific Union, which is now acquired by Compass, so I've been, uh, I've been around for a long time. Kathy, I can't hear you. That's right. I muted myself. We could have created a panel with you on it on any level, international business, forms, professional standards. But the reason I chose generosity and gratitude to call you was simply because of your nature in the business, Joski, your, your ability to smile and laugh and be a contributing factor at all levels of the of the industry. And so I, I'm, I'm going to come back and circle on that because I want to say not only has your tenure been ex uh, exemplary in the professional standard, but as a friend and as somebody who contributes at a high level to the industry, I'd have to say that you're one of the top people when I think of that. Well, thank so you so much. Yeah, we will cover that. Patrick, you have been and the the money guy, or and bringing money in different levels and different buckets to the industry, and I think the level of generosity and gratitude, and also community building for yourself. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your tenure in the business in the industry. Sure. Yeah. Well, I uh, started out in the Bay Area as uh, a teacher and youth worker, and then uh, transitioned to new home sales uh, for Polaris Group 
before it was Polaris Pacific and uh, worked there for about five years. And uh, when the downturn came, uh, I shifted my, uh, there was no cranes, there was no more new construction going up. I, I changed over to mortgage. And, uh, you know, interestingly enough, uh, at that time in the mortgage industry, there was huge changes through Dodd-Frank Act and all of the changes that went through kind of turning the mortgage industry on its head uh, and putting a lot more regulation in. And I really see parallels between that change in the mortgage industry and what's going on in the real estate industry right now. And um, so it, it was challenging at first uh, to, to like change business, how, you know, how it was done at that time. But, you know, put your head down, figure out the changes, keep positive, And before you know it, your business will bloom. So just, you know, that that's my message throughout today is that, you know, you'll get through this. There is, there's an other side, you know, it'll, there are other doors will open as, as some close. So um, yeah, right now working uh, through uh, BMO, uh, Bank of Montreal, um, and, you know, just trying to, you know, maintain focus with clients and build uh, community and, and be a resource uh, moving forward. Well, and I also worked with you as you tirelessly contributed to the Education and Events Committee for I was with you for two years. And I do not think that you that, that was your maiden voyage. I think you've been on this on that committee contributing to the benefit of the industry um, quite a bit. So that's why you got the tap on the shoulder to come and join us, because it's not just about keeping your nose down and doing the work in spite of all the all of the elements, but it's also the idea that you contribute on that level. So I'd like to be able to come back to that too. And good. Now we oh great. So thank you. So we have Stephanie Johnson. I was with us as well. And Stephanie comes to comes to my mind because not only is she gener going through all the changes of the economic cycle in San Francisco, but she also made some great changes in her business in the midst of a lot of environmental changes. So tell us a little bit, I don't know if you heard the question, but just a little bit about your tenure in the industry and, um, and yeah, just a little bit about your background and your tenure in your industry. Okay. Well, Ron, I'm sorry. I had the link, but it didn't promote me to panelists. So thank you for letting me join you. <laughs> you are, yeah, you but, are promoted. Uh, <laughs> all working out. Um, thanks, Kathy. I'm really grateful to be here, first of all. So thank you for inviting me to join. Um, uh, well, I mean, I, this is my 20th year selling real estate, which I cannot believe that is the case. I started my career in 2000, uh, beginning of 2005 um, at Zephyr, and I worked with wonderful people there for 10 years um, and uh, built my business on open houses and networking and um, being, I think, really generous with the people that I knew, which were few and far between uh, in San Francisco when I started. I left Zephyr and I was at uh, Pacific Union uh, in Patrick Barber's office for um, several years. Then we were acquired by Compass. I was a Compass agent. And then about a year and a half ago, my close closing out in two years, I guess, uh, I left and I joined a mobile brokerage called EXP. And I have my own DBA there called Realwise Properties. Um, and I did that for several reasons. One, I just wanted the challenge of having my own ship to run. I really wanted to differentiate myself in terms of aligning my business values with my own personal values and being in control of my messaging. Um, and so this is right up my alley. This is kind of what I care about a lot. Um, and so I'm really grateful to be here and happy to contribute what I can. So Yeah, and, and I love it. And, and not just in the business, but of the business as well. You were the first invitation I had to join a podcast. You're, you're wanting to reach above and beyond your regular, not only your client base and your community of real estate professionals, but how real estate affects other people, the lives of other people. And that, that your whole, not even a brand, but your messaging of real wise emanates from your choices and your standards. So thank you for Stephanie for being here. Yeah, thanks for and, having me. And, oh, my pleasure. And Andrea, Andrea and I go way back, but considering <laughs> that we both, I, at least I think she looks like she started at 12. It's just a matter of, uh, she's been a contributing factor to my life personally and professionally over the years. So Andrea, please, a little bit about your tenure in the business. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. So I just celebrated my 30-year anniversary 
on April 3rd and which is crazy to me mm -hmm. um but i've actually been in real estate for 32 years because i started out at um, mcguire real estate back in the day when joski was still there <laughs> <laughs> um and um you know just did office support and um i'm currently with vanguard properties i would say i was at mcguire for quite a bit and but pacific union was probably my home for the longest time um, off and on, you know, through all of their changes. And I'm really just grateful that after 30 years, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, yeah. And I, I love it because I remember when we met and you, you had that backbone of starting at McGuire. And I love when you said just administratively, because that gave you so much resilience in being able to handle the basic package of our business and then from there the roots all up and just a little fyi and then we'll go into the questions but i think andrea and i did the only sfar wcr chili cook-off that was oh, yeah. ever ever a reality in our history trying to make our little town of san francisco like a little country town and i think we had a pretty good turnout in the we middle had of the a great turnout we <laughs> had we had TRI, we had all the companies. No, we did really well. You know, we brought yeah. them to everybody together, which is, which at the end of the day really is what we need more of. And I think mm -hmm. what we're lacking just because of COVID, we've mm -hmm. tried to get back together, but I think we're all just a little tired too with all the changes. <laughs> and I love that. And that's a perfect segue of reconnection. You know, every right. single healthy model, whether it be within the within an industry, a company, or even individual homes, is about connection and everything. And there isn't any other tendon that brings connection more together than a spirit of generosity and gratitude. And so what I would love to love to see, and we'll kind of go about this a little sideways here. Patrick, where do you see what role has generosity played in the building of your business, especially through the through the transitions that you've gone through from new home sales to different lenders that you've worked for? Where's generosity paid off for you? Um, well, obviously with clients, right? So you have to give them, you know, time <laughs> and patience and counseling and, you know, doing, wearing all the various hats uh, that we wear with them, um, you know, being very uh, generous with your availability schedule wise, uh, meeting them where they are versus, you know, oh, it's, it's after five or whatever, Right. Yeah. You, you have to be uh, available. And, you know, there's a balancing act there. Kathy, you and I have talked about that in regards to, you know, having a life, uh, but also, um, you know, creating the space to, to have those conversations. Um, as far as like community building, um, I think there's a lot of organizations around that you can connect with and be generous with others. Like what comes to mind for me is uh, like business networking, international BNI, it's it's based in giver's game. So you're constantly trying to refer other people um, and not looking out for what's in it for you. Um, home for a Home is a organization that's based in San Francisco. Every time you close a transaction, you give money to build a home uh, in uh, Guatemala. Um, that I've been a part of that. You know, SFAR is a huge community. Uh, you know, you can volunteer on committees uh, and then, you know, there's obvious, you know, your personal spheres, um, you know, in, in the activities that you do uh, socially. Um, there's, uh, you know, ways to, to give back there. Um, you know, I've done financial uh, education uh, for youth and things, giving back there. And then that's actually foster relationships, um, you know, into communities that I probably wouldn't step into necessarily um, in my normal walk of life. But, you know, putting on these seminars, I'm invited there, um, you know, regularly and ha have clients in East Oakland and um, uh, East Palo Alto uh, by, you know, doing these, these seminars and, and outreach. So there's a lot of different ways that you can give back and build community at the same time. And that can translate to business, um, you know, ways of, of generating business for not only yourself, but for others. 
I love that. I love that. And I can see that in action. I think there's nothing worse than as an independent contractor looking at an empty day timer. I'm old too, so I use paper. But I mean, there's nothing worse than looking at a blank slate and thinking, how do I fill this in? And, you know, Steph, I want to ask you the same question about where does generosity play into your thing, into your business model? But also, and I'm going to put a little twist on it because Patrick kind of lended himself to it, boundaries. Boundaries as well. So if we look at the generosity and the constant contribution, yeah. let's talk about generosity and boundaries a little bit. I mean, I don't I think it's Brene Brown that talks about boundaries a lot, and I really like her. I think that um, the key to being a, a continual resource is to take care of yourself first and to give from a full cup. And so I think um, being really clear about where where you're willing to go with your generosity and how when it feels authentic to you and then checking in with yourself when it starts to feel like you're pushing yourself because you have an agenda. And I think, um, so for me, I really try to, to, to check in with myself when I'm being generous in any way, whether it's with my time, with my money, with uh, my mentorship, um, you know, is this authentic for me? And also, is this something that I have the capacity to give without uh, depleting myself? Because ultimately, I can't, I'm not doing anyone any good if I'm overworking. And I did that for many years. And I, I think I really paid a price for it. So I would say, having boundaries around your business, and everyone's going to have a little bit different way of looking at this for themselves. But you know, I am careful about how many hours I give and I make sure that those those hours that I give are really strategically placed in places that I think um, I'll give the most benefit. First of all, I'm, generosity shouldn't have strings attached. I think <laughs> if we're giving to get, it starts to feel salesy and transactional. And that's really, you know, going to, I think, sink your business faster than anything. I think you really want to give when you feel that it's a wholehearted give and it has no strings attached and there's no expectation of return, that's when the magic happens. So, um, so yeah, that's how I, that's how I look at it and how I navigate whether I want to give to something or not. Yeah. And I like that. And, and that holistic approach tends to lend itself to longevity in the business because longevity yeah. in general, I think we yeah. live longer. <laughs> we, yeah. yeah. If we live that way. <laughs> yeah. And so, Andrea, you as well, because I know your generous nature inside out. And I also know I also know the fullness of your life at home. So talk to me a little bit about your your generosity at work and your boundaries with boundaries. Loves. Boundaries are something I've only been working on for the last year, mm. <laughs> which is interesting to say after 29 years in business. Um, I am a mother hen. My generosity for me, the way that I do business is I like to take care of people, it, you know, and sometimes I forget to take care of myself, right? That That is a big thing. Um, but it's hard because I get so much enjoyment out of making people happy. <laughs> you know, I mean, I guess that's my drug really is just a satisfied, and I don't mean just customer. It, it doesn't just have to be about a, a selling something, um, providing an opinion or a thought that someone didn't think of that kind of fixed something for them. So generosity is a big one. Um, I've been fortunate that um, many of the groups that I've joined and been part of um, have taught me a lot of things and taught mm -hmm. me how to be more generous even with other people. Um, so now I think I'm going to start working on being a little bit more generous with myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's funny because I had to stop thinking that in a 24 hour day, my sleeping and my time had to be together. Right. So it was like 12 hours of work and 12 hours of sleeping and breathing, eating, anything else I could do for myself. And, and so I'm trying to change that balance a little bit. Like Stephanie said, um, not give of my time quite so much all the time, uh, putting people off a little bit and saying, you know what, I'd love to help you with that, especially if it's, you know, just something that somebody needs. Can we do it at another time? Right. I'm a more of like, let's just get it done and gone. And then what happens is all of a sudden now I have a list of 20 things that I still have to get done. So that would be my only thing is 
trying to be more generous with our ourselves, which is important because by gener being generous with ourselves, we have more energy for our clients. Yes, and I, and I love what you said. Yeah, I love what you said about the reciprocal nature of being in relationship with others as well. Again, back to the need for connection because I think it's an it's a it's an oversight if we overgive we tend to find ourselves isolated. But when we're connecting, we tend to find ourselves in reciprocal relationships. Thank goodness I have you. Joski, you get to answer any combination of anything we just talked about because I saw your head bursting with ideas. So share with me between <laughs> generosity and boundaries, where do, where's, where's Joski? You, you know, um, the the beauty of, of real estate, I think, is that you can, there are so many different, components to being in real estate, i.e. Kathy, you, when you and I first met, you were in sales and then you went to management, Stephanie, the same thing, Andrea, I've known forever, same, you know, Andrea, I forgot you were, um, you were in, at McGuire as an assistant. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I love that. I love, I, I love, I, I love rehearing that. Um, you know, in my business model, um, I decided uh, many years ago to set hours and uh, everyone thought I was absolutely crazy, but I needed to have a balance. Um, I don't have kids. So I know um, people with kids usually did it, but didn't really do it. Uh, or, you know, talk about it. I actually talked to my clients and I said, look, I'm available Monday through Thursday from nine, and I still do this from, from nine to eight. Um, uh, Thursdays, though, uh, I try to take a half a day off, the, the morning half. And then on Friday, I, you know, uh, I'm available from nine to six. And then Saturday and Sunday, I'm available, available from 10 to five. So I, show, I, I explain to clients that, you know, that's, you can reach me daily. However, don't call me at midnight to to discuss a transaction. Um, and the way that came about, my setting this was, uh, I had a client called me about midnight and she called me a a-hole. Uh, these were back in the days when people were just, you know, mean and nasty. <laughs> um, and I, I hung up on her and that's when I thought, no, never again. Uh, another time someone uh, had... He was pretty, he was drunk and he was showing off, uh, taking this call in front of his um, family and friends. And I just thought, you know, I don't need this. I, I really don't. And once I, I set the hours and created that boundary, um, it really elevated my business in, in many different ways. So um, I just wanted to touch on that. And what else did you ask me about <laughs> no 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 i love that and i love that because you know i hope whether there's we have an uh, whoever's on audience today or who may be looking at this in the future that what what we've learned is this isn't an either or business you know you don't come into this and try to block out something and and compartmentalize yourself so much that you leave yourself in one room or another you have to bring all of you into the picture much along the brene brown but also just the simple thing of of don't call me that. Don't call me that. Right. So, so I just appreciate that, Joski. And, and the, I think the generosity and one of the things that came up for you and many people like you, your greatness does not serve as uh, your greatness in the business um, and your ability to keep recreating yourself. And we're going to, I'm going to bring bring that up on the next one too. Stephanie, you touched on it. And Joski, I love your international flair that you're doing now as well on your marketing pieces. But your creativity is also enhanced because, because of your gratitude, kind of a self-assessment. So tell me, in the world of gratitude, I'm going to start with you, Joski. Tell me some of the things how your gratitude for where you are in your, in your life, in your business shows up in the way that you're promoting yourself or you know, yourself I, out there. Many, many years ago, um, uh, and and I asked an agent, how was she so successful? And she said, um, uh, how to become successful and she's in, 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 in this industry. And she shared with me that what worked for her is to be to find what you're passionate about in life. And with that, that's exactly what I did. Um, and so by finding what I was passionate about, I 
uh, ended up on a number of nonprofit boards over the years. Mm -hmm. And with that, there is that reciprocal um, relationship that you have, but also from a general a generosity perspective. And I think that resonated with so many of my clients uh, when they learned that I was on the board, for example, art and film for teenagers. Um, wow, what are you doing with teenagers? You, you know, you don't have kids. And it's like, well, this is my way of being able to touch and give back. And and it also brings in brings up a great way to communicate with with clients, especially new clients, and 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 bringing them into your own fold. So um, uh, that for me, it's really been uh, working with the nonprofit organizations that I have, and a, a couple of for profits actually, though. Uh, so that's been really rewarding. I love the way the passion feeds your gratitude and your generosity. And I want to stay on that theme for just a second, if you don't mind. Andrea, yeah. can I come back to you on your on passion? Because I know that I followed you. I sometimes travel the world through Facebook and I, I traveled the world with Andrea as she was going. And, and so tell me a little bit about your passion for where you're at in your life and how that shows up in your business model. Well, as you know, I've raised five kids and so <laughs> the youngest is 19. So. I'm passionate about the fact that, you know, I have a little bit more time and, and they have their space. Um, I love to travel, definitely travel. As you know, um, I took a two and a half, almost three months sabbatical end of last year, beginning of this year, also to celebrate my 30 year anniversary. And the fact that I don't think I took more than three weeks off, if that, with any of my pregnancies, only three pregnancies, but um you know, my passion are still my clients, right? And that's part of, we we talked briefly offline how some agents have left the business and I can see why it's scary and I'm scared. You know, I had to go through this seven stages and get to accept, acceptance with the way we're going to be doing new things. But at the end of the day, what I realized as I was complaining and thinking and going through it all, the reality is I am passionate about what I do. I love the clients. And if I cannot communicate that, then, you know, that's, I think the most important thing is to communicate to all the people around us, what we love, what we do, what makes us happy, because I think that people will buy into that and understand that. Um, so I, I know that's not exactly about what my passion is. I, I like to travel. I like but I really do like the business. I like people. I'm a people person. I talk too much, but this is what I enjoy. <laughs> no, I, I, I see it. And, and the passion, and, and it's interesting because my background before real estate is the restaurant business, the hospitality industry. And I think that if there's three things I value the most, it's love, freedom, and hospitality. You know, and, and look, we get to do all of that in real estate. So it, it shows up. It shows up. Stephanie, how does your passion for what you're doing right now drive your, you're on mute. Well, I have a lot of passions. Uh, some of them feed real estate and some don't. <laughs> um, I'm a musician, which is a huge passion. It hasn't really been a source of much business, but <laughs> musicians are not really the people you think of uh, buying and selling homes in the Bay Area. But um, besides that, I think my biggest passion is really, you know, I like to know how people click, like what makes people tick. I like I call myself a residential real estate therapist. I definitely feel like we get so deep in the weeds with people and their personal lives and their relationships and their relationship to money um, and their relationship to their partner, to their family uh, in the big moments of their lives. I think there's so much richness there. If, you, if, you would, if you're interested and you would tune to that, I think um, there's a lot to learn about people and about how, how, how people make decisions. And so, I think my passion comes into play there. Um, so I'm actually really generous with my own story with people because I think it helps people open up and feel safe to talk to you about the divorce they're going through or whatever. And I definitely feel like that um, enriches my life. I've, I've, met, I've made so many uh, friends who were clients first uh, and those people trust me implicitly. They send me multiple referrals. I do multiple transactions with people over the course of 
20 years. Um, you know, so I feel like the fact that I'm really deeply interested in people uh, makes a difference. It makes a difference in the cementing of relationships and the loyalty of clients um, and the quality of clients they send my way as well. They they know that I'm going to take good care of somebody who so I end up with people who are in kind of sometimes in dire straits, but I, I manage to help them navigate that. And that feels really rewarding to me. It keeps me interested and engaged in a business that otherwise the paperwork's kind of rote, right? I mean, it's not rocket science what we do, but I think the people part of it is actually requires a tremendous amount of emotional intelligence, uh, compassion, kindness, you know, all of that goes a long way. So I've built a business on the back of that on, on deep friendships. And I think my friends are my clients, my clients are my friends. And I think if there's one piece of advice I would offer, it's don't build a wall between your personal life and your business life, that your business life and your personal life should feed one another and that there should be no wall there. I think so many new agents are buying leads and they're not marketing to the people that know and trust them the most. And that's, in my view, that's a mistake. And you're also denying the people that trust you your vision, your your knowledge, your expertise, and your support. So, I love that the no like and trust economy. Truly, that's yeah. that's where we're at. We're in the no like and trust economy. And I will, and I'm going to come come back to something that uh, I got to make a note to myself because it's interesting, Patrick. I know that I know your passions, and I know I know you know, the education, I know your love for your family and sport and all the things that you do. How has that been a part of your generosity, gratitude and and model for business? You're on mute because you guys are kind enough to unmute. (laughs) You're still on mute, babe. There we go. Yeah. I didn't mean to call you babe just in case any lawyers Um, are listening. Hopefully I'm not. You can call me babe. Um, So I, 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 you know, the, the, I'm not sure if I'm breaking up here or not, but you're good um, now. You're good now. A, a, re, a okay, a, a new agent uh, who's a really good friend of mine uh, reached out to me recently, being very excited about the business and getting into it, and uh, he said, "I can't wait to." <laughs> be prosperous and and wealthy and i'm gonna stop my video here sorry um you know talking about you know making money and things and he was also expressing to me his love of coaching his kids and i was like don't worry about the money (laughs) focus on your kids you know build relationships through the uh, coaching endeavors that you have, build your community and, you know, prosper that way versus you know, thinking that, you know, you're going to have a connection and, and uh, sorry, this whole thing's throwing me off a little bit. Um, essentially, pointing that new agent to his passions, my passions, um, you know, are rugby building a relationship with, with people. Um, you know, I, I think I shared with you, Kathy, that we had a, um, a, a police officer and um, age, real estate agent in San Francisco who, who recently uh, passed away uh, at age 30. Um, mm-hmm. And we're not promised, you know, tomorrow. And we have to try to live our best lives and into, um, you know, what makes us happy, what brings us, you know, life energy. Um, And for me, it's connecting with clients, creating pathways to things that they didn't think were possible. So uh, I am referred a lot of new, um, new buyers, and some of those buyers, you know, have really no clue on, you know, how to apply for a mortgage, what it looks like, you know, financially, how their payments set up. Um, so a lot of what I do is, you know, engaging and uh, just painting the picture of now, painting the picture of 10 years from now, painting the picture of, you know, sometimes 30 years down the road for a property or finance and, and bringing 
kind of to life what this you know huge debt obligation is going to mean to people you know down the road and and what financial freedom it will open up if they you know work the process so i i would say you know just kind of the building blocks there of, of you know my community connecting with people on an individual basis and then you know really sharing with them the, the information that they need to to feel empowered yeah and I, I i love that about you and i know that when i called you and asked you it was the monday right after that event happened with the with the with your young friend and i remember you thought i don't even know where i'm going to get the energy to talk you know and it's just devastating and i think and i love stephanie podcast real wise because it's it's true we have to keep the real and real tour in order to make this job have any legs to it. And just so that we don't get too touchy feeling and away from things, I wanna come back to something that I admire in all of you as well, which are the systems and the teams that you have in place to keep that going. And Joski, I know for a fact that when I looked at your, your website and the way that you continue to keep yourself fresh and creative and, and relevant in, in this marketplace, Tell us a little bit about your systems, your teams, or whatever is behind the scenes keeping you in the game and keeping you relevant on this. <laughs> Kathy, you're so sweet. I wish I had all of that <laughs> set up so properly. You're calling me out on it. Uh, I, I, I do not, actually. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I do a lot of it. Well, I, I, as you know from most of us, it, it all starts with us and um, uh, and how you how you want to design your your own your own practice. And mine was and it's not that I'm a control freak, but I like just controlling the the messaging, right? Um, and uh, I, I have worked with some amazing assistants. Um, one uh, who was so talented. I really almost cried when he he left, and now he's a, a real estate agent up in um, Sonoma with his mother. Uh, for many, and I picked him up when he was still in college, and but he was just so smart and so creative. So I did have some really good people around me, um, but a lot of it is you know what I've been really working on um, on, on on my own. So. Sorry. But, but you no, 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 don't you dare apologize, because I do love the fact that, you know, because I'll be the first to say I've, I've worked in many operations and many and people have learned don't give me original documents. I mean, I, I do not. If you work with me, do not give me an original document uh -huh. that goes to the original document holder. So to thine own self be true you know, know who you are, know what you bring to the table and play into your strengths and yeah. hire into. And with so many adjunct things that you can add into, right? Where we can get, where we can go online and do, honey, I'm, uh, honey, again, sue me again. But for me to fax somebody was like the art of my technology when I started. I would hit print and fax. A cut and paste literally was cut, and paste and then put it on the printer and do it in black and white so you couldn't see and the white out around the lines. I mean, those were, that was the height of my technology coming in. I didn't get ready to get ready. I jumped in and learned how to swim. And I think that that shows up in the creativity because Joski, you are highly creative. Well, th thank you very much. Um, I see Misha uh, is asking about commercial real estate. Amisha, I do. I'm a hybrid agent. I, I do residential and commercial sales. Uh, and um, matter of fact, I have uh, Tommaso's restaurant listed for sale right now <laughs> and the building that they're in, cheap plug there. But, a little um, cheap plug. <laughs> no, but, but, but Misha, I just checked you out on LinkedIn and uh, we should talk. Uh, I would love to, uh, to, to see if we can do, do some business together. Um, sorry about that. Side note, Kathy. Uh, no, no, no. Again, I think I think the organizational skill of an independent contractor needs to be defined by the independent contractor. I do not think that there's a template. If there were templates we were looking for, we'd be looking for IBM. So I I I I I yearn to learn 
the creative function that you're moving under because uh, you, Steve Maver Mahalis, um, who else is out there? Barbara and Robert Callan. I mean, all of these people who have gotten, so they, they just enjoy and emanate yeah. into, into their, into their business. So it, I love your, whatever your system is, it's working, Joski. Um, and real quick, this was Patrick brought this up about his friend with kids and they were having that discussion. Patrick, I have to tell you, there are so many agents who have kids, and I hate to put it this way because I don't have kids, but they have milked those kids. <laughs> no I one's business. I want them. <laughs> <laughs> and they are still doing it to this day. Um, and and, and uh, one real big producer um, is a coach, uh, soccer coach here in town. And that guy is, uh, you know, he is working that field. So in many ways than one. Anyway. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that. You know, it's interesting when my kids would go to high school, it would be like, don't forget if any of your kids or if any of your friend's parents are looking to buy or sell real estate, you have a realtor you can send them to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it works. So on that, let's go systems. I want to go to Stephanie on, on your systems that implement all of this, this passion and freedom. And by the way, thank goodness we have an industry that feeds our non, our non um, e economical passions like art and science, art, yeah. art and music. So tell me about your systems. Well, systems I'm not that passionate about, I'll be honest. I don't love it. I like people. I don't love computers. I don't love technology. I, you know, I often am screaming at my teenager to come fix my computer before I throw it out the window. So <laughs> He's happy to help anytime, but I will say I, I, I made the smart move when I left Compass. I made the intelligent move of hiring someone who is really good at systems. And, um, and I had her set up everything for me. And so I was in a position where I could do that and I had the money to do that. And that was a really a privileged place to be for years. I was on my own. And, um, and so I do, I, I do use follow a boss, um, I do use that pretty religiously. I'm pretty thoughtful about staying in touch with people that I know, even if it's just to say hi and, you know, how did soccer season go or whatever it is. Um, and then also I do categorize my my, um, my 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 clientele and the people that I know in terms of like where they are in the buying and selling process. And I'm making sure to reach out to them um, regularly via email and phone, but mostly via email. Like most people don't want to call um, during the day, but or I'll text them, they're all on my phone as well. So I might text somebody and say, I'm thinking of you, I saw a house today. If you're interested, I'll send it to you. So um, that's one thing I'm pretty religious about, that system of staying in touch. Uh, because I use a system that it's all set up for me and it's all categorized well, it makes it really easy. I spend maybe not even 10 minutes a day doing that. Um, and then other systems, um, Ooh, I mean, when I left Compass, I had to sort of reinvent everything. And so I went back to a Moxie listing presentation. I mean, if we're going to get in the weeds, you know, I think that's still the best product on the market. Uh, we use it at Pack Union. We use it at Zephyr. It's been around forever. It does the job. It's beautiful. My clients love it. I'm able to do Zoom meetings and do a full presentation. That's really helpful, um, especially with people working from home. They don't really want to haul themselves into an office. <laughs> so I do a lot of my buyer and seller presentations digitally now. Um, and that's been great for me since I don't live in the city anymore. Um, I actually benefit from that, the work, work from afar. Um, and then I also, I do um, have help. I'm, I, I, I do not take on all of the property coordination myself. Uh, I try to leave a lot of space in my business for networking and for, and also for non-business, you know, I just want to have time with my kids. And so I, I do use a stager that does soup to nuts, everything. They do painting, they do floors, they do. And I think when I have a listing, it really takes a lot of the headache and a lot of the, the workload out of it. I outsource that and I have a way of getting my clients to agree to do that. And um, that's been really beneficial to me. It allows me to have multiple, you know, in a market that allows for that, <laughs> multiple listings happening at once, to have it be really easy. Um, and so I think like leveraging, leveraging, learning how to leverage the people around you, even if they don't work for you, leveraging the people around you to, to buy you time so that you can 
um, do some of this other stuff to be generous with your clientele. I mean, I, I did for years, I did it all myself and I really paid a price because I didn't leave myself that time to cultivate new relationships, to cultivate existing relationships, to cultivate buyers and sellers through that pipeline process, you know? So those kinds of things, those are the things I lean on, I guess. Did I answer your question? <laughs> uh, yeah, completely, completely. Again, to thy own self be true. I mean, this couldn't be better scripted. Jodowski did that. The creativity is never sacrificed for productivity. And the idea that relationships and staying connected, it's not just with our clients, but also with our with the people who can serve our clients. You I have to be able to work in the business. Yes less so you can work on the business more and i learned that really late unfortunately so hopefully someone's young and they're hearing me and they internalize that early. yeah yeah <laughs> and then and then there's andrea who who did start with the i, I remember talking about her getting a transaction coordinator and she did she loved filling doing all of all of the transactions until because that was her beginning right andrea and then you and then you were able to let it go so Cassie has been working with me for longer than I've been with Joe. So 12 <laughs> years. And I just started letting Cassie do my transactions seven <laughs> years ago. Like literally, I would still do it. But I am extremely fortunate that I married a fantastic man 10 years ago. And he was in business development sales prior to meeting me. And he put all my systems in place. Like mm -hmm. he did everything. He hired his old assistant from his old job. She worked with us for a year and she put all our systems in place, everything, because I couldn't do it. It's not my forte, which is going back to what was said earlier, find the people who can help you. You know, don't try to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of good people out there. Um, so, so I'm lucky in that respect that my systems are pretty set um, and we're always looking for new things. But um, I, I just want to mention something in response to the last question that came up, because I think it's funny. Definitely tell your kids to always remind people that you're in real estate. And I'll give you a funny story. My daughter, who's now 19, she was 11 years old and she was um, flying back to visit her dad in on the East Coast. And on the way home, she sat down next to a young girl. They started talking and she's like, and I guess the girl brought up real estate and or home. And she's like, I don't think I could ever buy it. My daughter says, yes, you can. My mother can help you. She, <laughs> like, she got off the phone, off the plane with the lady in by her hand and brought her to us and introduced <laughs> us. And basically we sold her a place like three months later. <laughs> so it's, and this is an 11 and, she, and we taught her this little tagline. It's more silly than anything else. Um, my parents rock real estate and they're never too busy for your referrals. You know, so uh, when, it, when an 11 year old says it, it's cute. <laughs> I love it. No, it's cute when you say it. And it's interesting because it is there. We, we create ambassadors as we go through, we go through business. I think the, the biggest system I have is to create raving fans, which means you never know what's being, what's being transferred. Patrick, talk to us a little bit about systems, systems and change and all of that, that you've gone through. Uh, well, systems, I think, you know, if we look at who's on the panel here, we might all be Gen X or boomers. Um, so there, there may be some folks who are on here that may be from a different uh, generation that may be tapping into AI right now and using those tools in a way that I can't possibly imagine. <laughs> Um, so there's a uh, component to that that I think, you know, the future is now and, and we're adapting in, in a way uh, that is going to leap us forward and hopefully that there's a human component to that that remains grounded and uh, focused in, you know, uh, what we're doing, but still uh, adds a level of, of for yeah yeah thank and you patrick here. Off, yeah your video yeah, your audio is just a little shady. spotty but but i think we got and it's true which is the perfect segue into the last question 
we talk about it not being it's not either or. So with the changes that we're going through with our in, within our industry and the longevity that it takes to to hold on to what we value, you know, be you and see what happens is kind of my mon- my mantra for this year. But we're we're facing great changes. So Stephanie, if you were to mentor, or reach out, or talk to two people simultaneously, one who's just gotten their license and is coming into the business, and somebody else who has been in the business for as long as you have, if not longer, and you're talking to them about what's working, what would you say to them about what's working for you now in this change? Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, first I would just empathize because I think, you know, I had a conversation this week. I was previewing a property in the city and an agent has been in the business longer than me. And she said, I have had the hardest year of my career this year. And I said, I think that there are a lot of people that are in that boat. And it's really, it can feel really demoralizing. And so I think first I would say like, be generous with yourself. Do not make this about you because there's a lot happening that is completely outside of our control. And it's really hard if you get those blinders on and you start worrying about whether you know you've lost it, your business is over. You know it's all dried up. It's gone away. You're not going to have the energy or the bandwidth to be creative and do what you need to do next in order to keep things going. And so I would say to the young person, well, one, I think you should be really grateful that you have to sign buyer broker agreements now. I think you should be really. We should all be really grateful that we have to do that because that does two things. It shows us in stark relief. What, where the status of our business, who's real, who's not. Someone who's not real is not gonna sign that. And guess what? Your hands are tied. You can't waste your Saturday showing them 20 properties that they're not gonna buy. You can't, you can't drive them around. You can't send them off market properties. You can't do anything. And so great, you know, now you know, now you know the reality of your business. Two, you're gonna learn your first year in business how to negotiate for your value. You're not going to have to wait until you get an opportunity to sell a listing. You know, I had to wait years before I had the opportunity to sell a listing and I had to learn and fail and learn and fail and go to Lorna Hines and all the things that I've done to figure out how to negotiate for my value and how to hold myself in front of a client that's picking me apart. And that's a skill that like a lot of buyer's agents, they get to dance around for years and now there's no getting out of it. You have to learn how to sell yourself. And so I would say, be grateful, take the trainings, find a mentor, you know, do what you need to do to learn how to do that because that is going to make or break your career. Being able to do that and do it and just like be the person in the room that people don't even question whether they're going to hire you. And that takes time. Might as well start now. <laughs> um, and to the person who's been in the business a long time, I would say like if you're looking at an empty calendar and you're, you're, panicked or you're afraid or whatever it is you're going through or you're jaded like think about ways to expand who you're serving um i think the days of being the neighborhood specialist are done there's no money in in being the neighborhood specialist there's no money in being maybe even a san francisco specialist i think the san francisco market is more robust than the other market i work in which is sonoma and napa counties and there are very little listings here And a lot of agents, you can't specialize in Sonoma town of Sonoma, you'll go broke. So you have to be thoughtful, I think, about pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, taking those clients outside of the area you've traditionally served and be willing to, you know, use their full breadth and depth of your license, which is statewide. I see people listing, I could name some brokerages, we don't need to talk about them, but there are young people who are selling in LA and San Francisco. There are people selling in Santa Barbara and San Francisco. I'm selling in wine country in San Francisco. I would say, if you're struggling, maybe take that client, don't refer them. You know, um, I will say the pandemic taught me that. My clients asked me to follow them into other markets and I sold in Berkeley, Orinda, Marin, Sonoma, Napa. I was all over the map from the the time the pandemic started only because I was in a panic that I was gonna (laughs) Lose my, lose my business. And then it ended up being one of the best things that could have ever happened to me. It allowed me to change my whole life. So I would say, you know, expand your horizons, be brave. Now's the time. You have time on your hands, maybe, you know, put energy into something new. And it might, it might spark your, your love of the business again, too, if you're struggling. Yeah. 
Oh, that's beautiful, Stephanie. That's beautiful. Joski, I saw your head nodding there. What do you have to say to a brand new agent who says, Joski, Joski, what am uh, I doing? <laughs> oh, boy, that, that's a really loaded question. But, you know, I, I, um, I do want to just go back to systems in place. One of the things that I did pre-pandemic was move my entire business online. As you mentioned, I, um, I've moved more into an international space with my, my real estate, or I'd like to say returning back to it since I started with an Australian firm. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, I've been traveling a great deal uh, around the globe. I moved my business online. And so when COVID hit, I was already there. It was crazy, but I didn't miss a beat. I had my buyer's presentations, my seller presentations. Everything was all set up. And I, it was a very smooth um, transition for me uh, into that. Um, <clears throat> you know, again, to, to, to new people, you know, look at the industry overall. I think Stephanie really tapped into this well of that, um, you know, our, our, we are licensed in the entire state of California. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's difficult to say, oh my God, I'm doing a deal in LA, but I've known many agents who do it and they just, you know, get on the plane and they go down and they show they show them properties. Um, you you can do it, uh, you know, uh, you know but, but I would, I would say to new agents, um, do start off smaller and then go more statewide or more na na nationwide. And, and then even you can go global, which is what, um, where I am in my practice right now. So. Yeah. The ability to, you know, and, and knowing that your roots are deep <clears throat> and your branches wide, right. I love that expansion at this time because you're right, Stephanie, what happens, what, especially if we've been in for me, when I get fearful, I get contracted. It's like life life gets small and then I get scared or I get scared and life gets small. But to break through is that expansiveness of it. Of If this is true, what else can be true? I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. So I love that, I love that. Andrea, new newbie agent, senior peer like me, what would you? <laughs> so, you know, I'm a Bethaniaite, yes, right? We are. Yes, so we are, yes. So I'll start with the older agent. Um, because I'm an older agent and I got to a point where I'm like, what am I going to do? And we forget to just go back to the basics, right? Yeah. If you don't have anything on your calendar for today or for tomorrow, pick up the phone, call an old client, see how they're doing, you know, um, make a coffee date. I like to visit my clients. I don't do it as often as I should, but my clients think it's not weird if I text them and say, hey, I'm, I'd love to see you. I'm in the neighborhood. Can I come by or will you be around tomorrow kind of thing, <clears throat> you know? Um, and what I started to do in the last few months, because I was kind of at that same place, like I said, I went through my stages and got to acceptance and said, okay, I need to find the energy and the commitment and the passion myself. Um, and I just started reaching out to clients, remind, happy birthday, how are you doing? Happy house anniversary, all of that stuff. And people started responding and then asking questions. And I've gotten a couple of referrals just in the last three months from picking up the phone and the email and just reaching out to people. Um, and then, you know, because I think that we forget that these people want to talk to us. They like us. Like, you know, they did a transaction with us. If we've been in communication with us, um, and if you remind them that you're here, sometimes they're like, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, my 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 coworker mentioned something, you know. And so I think that that's important is to for us old timers to get back in front of our people. And for the new agent, well, I think that now is a great time to be able to promote yourself and reach out to everyone, you know, and say, hey, you, I bet you're confused about this whole real estate thing and what's going on. I'd love to tell you about it, you know, and that way, I mean, because they have nothing else to really talk about. They can't talk about their sales. They're just starting to get into it. But if they just explain this, right, and make it sound less scary or whatnot, make sure you know what you're saying and you practice it. 
how could you not get people to reach out to you if they come across someone? Oh, I just talked to an agent. They made it sound a lot less scary. Call him. It'll be okay. Right? I mean, that's what we need to communicate to everybody. We know what we're doing. It's going to be okay. I love that. I love that. And I think the generosity and gratitude is the, the, is the antithesis of being afraid and hiding. So that's really what I wanted with this particular, with this particular webinar, Patrick, we have a minute or two out wind it up. You've got, you already said you've got a new agent calling you and, and then you've got somebody like me saying, how much is money going to cost me? And how do I get through on my buyer's contract? Talk to us. What do you do? What do you say? Well, I couldn't, I I couldn't agree with Andrea uh, more. Work your database if you're an established professional. Uh, and, and then if you're new, don't be a secret agent. Don't be someone who no one knows you're an agent. Tell everybody you're an agent, right? Like, like, like anyone who wants to talk about real estate from cocktail parties to after school functions, like let them know. Engage. Don't hide. I love it. I love it. You all have been amazing. And I know what it is to get on your calendar. And I appreciate you blocking the time out to be a part of this. We've come to the end of the webinar, but I would just like to, I, this is going to go down in what I consider to be one of the best content. If you if you scour LinkedIn, you'll find that the greatest forms of leadership come in the form of emotional intelligence right now, that the, 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 the forms are changing daily, but the, the real stuff about what's going to get us through is going, is getting more solidified. So thank you for taking the time to be on this. I appreciate you bringing this all to reality and, um, I'll reach out to you again soon. Again, uh, thank you, SFAR, for putting this on. And for anybody who wants any questions, uh, all of us are part of the SFAR membership. So look us up. We're here for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.